Hello students, in this video we'll begin our discussion of spherical harmonics. So let's consider the Laplace equation. Which is Laplacian of u is equal to zero, right? And we're going to write the Laplacian in spherical coordinates. Write this equation in spherical coordinates. Spherical coordinates, we're going to use the physic, physics version of spherical coordinates, which is going to be r, and then the tangent inverse, the tangent inverse of y over x is going to be phi in this case. In previous videos, we've called it theta, but we're going to use it in this, this, um, this situation over here, right? So in other words, with this configuration, what do we have? We have that x is r, and that's going to be the cosine of phi, the sine of theta, y is going to be r, the sine of phi, the sine of theta, and z is going to be r, the cosine of theta. And then what happens in spherical coordinates is that you can link, we'll link to the previous video, but our Laplacian of u equals zero is, is equivalent to saying that u r r plus one over two over r u r plus one over r squared sine theta d by d theta of sine theta d by d theta of u and then plus 1 over r squared sine squared theta, and then u phi phi, like so. That's the Laplacian, and this is going to be equal to 0, right? And so now what we're going to do is we're going to separate variables. So we're going to write our solution in the following form. So separate variables. In other words, what we're going to do is we're going to let u be a function e, of phi, a function p of theta, and a function r of r, like that. And so we're going to seek solutions of this form, right? And so if we plug them into the Laplace equation, and what, the first thing we do actually is if we, you notice we can just multiply by r squared over here. So if I multiply by r squared, I can get rid of this, get rid of this, turn that into an r squared, and then turn this into a what? And then turn this into a 2r to put it into self-symmetric form, okay? So that's what we'll do. And so what we have over here, so our equation, so this is going to be all these things, these are, these are going to be my r terms over here, these are going to be my theta terms over here, and these are going to be my phi terms over here with the theta, right? And so what we can conclude is the following. We can conclude that um, when we plug in these variables in, we're going to have an r squared r double prime plus 2r r prime r prime over r is going to be one of the terms we're going to get in our equation. Then we're going to have a what? Then we're going to have a plus 1 over sine theta. Then we're going to have a um, d by d theta, a theta derivative over here. And then a what? Then a sine of theta. And then a p prime of theta, p prime of theta, like that. That's going to be over p. And then these terms over here are just going to be what? plus 1 over sine squared uh, theta, and then e double prime of phi over e of phi is equal to 0, right? So that's what we're going to do. We separate these things, okay? So we've separated the variables now. And so now the key behind this is that now we have three variables. So I have the sum of three variables of different independent variables being equal to 0. So some of these things have to be constant, right? So by separating the, the separation constant, which is consistent, is the following. We can set e double prime using the periodicity of the function e over e of phi to be negative m squared. And then what we'll have is we're going to have, we're going to set this thing over here to be equal to n times n plus 1 for just a convenient choice of uh, eigen, eigenvalues, r double prime plus 2r, r prime over r is equal to n times n plus 1. And then finally, this expression over here, and this is where the spherical harmonics are going to come into play, then we're going to have that 1 over sine of theta, 1 over sine of theta, d by d theta, d by d theta, of the sine of theta, p prime, that's a theta derivative, over p, is going to be equal to what? It's going to be equal to, well, this thing is equal to n squared, so this thing has to be equal to negative n 
um, n times n plus 1, and then uh, plus this thing over here, right? So in other words, we're going to have a negative n times n plus 1 that will counteract these terms, these terms over here. And then I have to add on m squared over the sine squared of theta plus m squared, m squared over the sine squared of theta, like that. Okay, and now this makes a consistent choice of separating the variables, right? So now we can solve these equations individually. We'll pay the most attention to this one on the bottom over here. The first two equations are easy to solve, right? So this one over here is gonna give rise to solutions e of phi, which is gonna be c1 e to the what? e to the i m phi plus c2 e to the minus i m phi. And we can write these in terms of sines and cosines if we wish, right? This is actually a Cauchy-Euler equation, so this is Cauchy-Euler, we know how to solve Cauchy-Euler equations by making a logarithmic substitution. I'm not going to focus on this one because we've solved these equations a lot in the past, so this is going to be r of r is going to be c3 r to the power n, r to the power n, plus c4 r to the power negative n minus 1. So that's my solution for the r variables, my solution for the phi variables. And now i got to focus on the theta variables over here. So what we're going to have is we rearrange these things, and I rearrange this, I'm going to have what? I'm going to have 1 over sine of theta, and then a d by d theta, sine of theta, and I'm going to put dp, I'm going to put it right like this, db, dp, d theta, like so, is equal to, uh, we'll also we're just throw everything on one side of the equation over here. So now I'm going to have a plus n times n plus 1 minus m squared over sine squared theta, p is equal to, Zero. Now, this is a second order differential equation, which we don't, which looks very complicated. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the variables in this differential equation, change the independent variable in order to put it into a form that we know. And so, how are we going to change the independent variables over here? Well, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to let, I'm going to let t be the cosine of theta. Then this implies, this implies that the square root of one minus t squared is the sine of theta by trigonometry. And what is dp, what is dp d theta? dp d theta is dp dt, dt d theta. And so what is dt d theta? So in other words, when I do a theta derivative, doing a theta derivative is equivalent to doing a t derivative and multiplying that by what? By the t, dt d theta is going to be negative sine theta, negative sine theta. So I can replace all the theta derivatives with negative sine theta times a t derivative, okay? So what we have over here, Good, so that's what we're going to place the theta derivatives with. So what's going to happen over here? What's going to happen over here is that I have a d theta over sine theta. So d theta over sine theta is just really a t derivative over here with a negative sign, right? So this first term over here is going to turn to a negative t derivative. So it's going to be negative d by dt. And then I have a sine theta times a theta derivative. That's a what? Sine theta times a theta derivative. That's going to be a square root. That's going to be a, um, a factor of what now? So now let's let's be careful what this is going to be. Now inside over here, this sine theta is going to be a what? That's going to be a square root of one minus t squared. Good. And what's the theta derivative going to be? It's going to be dp dt times negative sine theta, right? So it's going to be a times negative square root one minus t squared times dp dt. And then plus what? Plus n times n plus one minus m squared over one minus t squared times p is equal to zero, okay? And so all total, these negative signs cancel out, right? And then you just have what? Then you just have this equation over here. So this, is gonna, this whole thing totals out to what? This is gonna turn into a just factor of one minus t squared. And so our differential equation now becomes the following. It becomes a one minus t squared, p double prime of t, minus two t, p prime of t, plus n times n plus one, minus m squared, over 1 minus t squared, p is equal to 0. And this is just the associated Legendre equation. This is the associated Legendre equation. Which we know how to solve. The solution is just going to be p, p n for the Legendre polynomials with an order of m, p m of t like that. That's going to be the associated Legendre equation. So the solution to this equation over here, we get a solution of PMT, and that's going to be this T is really a place with cosine theta. So, our overall solution to our equation, so our U of R theta and phi is going to be C1 E to the I M phi plus C2 E to the minus I M phi. 
and then what? And then C3 r to the n plus C4 r to the negative n minus 1, and then times these uh, spherical harmonics, P, N, M, and what's T? T is the cosine of theta, right? Cosine of theta, right? And of course, I can get a secondary solution. We're putting a negative, a negative M in there, right? But we won't focus on, we won't worry about the negative M in this case, because I'm just going to focus on particular things over here. And so what we have over here, and so just recall, we recall that P, N, M of T is going to be what? It's going to be a 1 minus T squared to the what? To the M over 2. Then I have M derivatives. D by DT. M derivatives of the nth Legendre polynomial. Like that. And there's probably plus minus sign, but these are the associated Legendre functions over here. Okay? And so what are these spherical harmonics? The spherical harmonics are where we, we take the real imaginary parts of these angular variables. We, think, we don't think about the radial variables. We want to think about harmonic functions on the sphere, right? And so we're going to get are these spherical harmonics. So these spherical harmonics, spherical harmonics, are really just what? Are really just cosine of m phi or sine of m phi times p n m cosine theta or the sine of m phi times p n m of cosine theta. Those are our spherical harmonics, right? And so these, these are the eigenvalues. So in other words, we can show for these spherical harmonics over here is you can show that these functions are called y n m n m of phi and theta. Okay? And of course, what we can show actually is we can show the following that if we look at r squared Laplacian of these spherical harmonics, y, n, m, what we get is we get negative n times n plus 1 y, n, m. So in other words, these spherical harmonics are the eigenvalues, are the eigenfunctions of the, of the Laplace operator when we restrict to the situation where we don't have any radial dependence. So these are the functions which are harmonic on the sphere, right? So we restrict to a sphere. These functions, these y and m, these spherical harmonics are the solutions of the Laplace, are the solutions and the eigenfunctions of the Laplace problem. They come up all the time when we're studying problems in statistical, uh, in, in statistical mechanics, in quantum mechanics, because the Schrodinger equation involves the Laplacian. So when you're looking for like when you're looking for angular solutions, the angular part of solutions to the Schrodinger equation, these spherical harmonics arise naturally in that study. And they also arise in, this, in, in a wide variety of different contexts, too. Whenever there's, a, whenever there's a spherical symmetry in a problem that involves Laplacian, these spherical harmonics play an essential role in understanding the analysis. Thank you very much.